So if you've been to retail, or more so been hunting for toys online, you might be aware that Mattel is putting out Ninja Turtle toys. Well, Ninja Turtle toys that are crossed over with He-Man toys. Hi, I'm Scott Toy Guru Nightlick, longtime toy collector, longtime toy maker. I actually did work for Mattel for quite a while. And, well, I'm getting a lot of questions uh, in my inbox and in the comment section about how in the world Mattel is able to make this. I mean, Mattel does not own Ninja Turtles. It's not a, never been made by, by, by Mattel. So to understand that, let's first talk about the crossover. All right, everyone knows what a crossover is, right? Or a guest appearance when somebody from another show or another company makes an appearance, you know, like Superman versus Spider-Man is a classic crossover. The crossover was actually invented by Jules Verne in his amazing book, The Mysterious Island, which if you haven't read it, it's awesome. It's got monkey butlers. I mean, you probably know it better from its modern incarnation, but yeah, go read the book. Anyway, back to crossovers. So yeah, they can be a lot of fun, especially for fanboys, because yeah, you can see some of your favorite characters that would normally not be together. And seeing this in toy form has the added value of permanence, because it's something you can put on your desk and hold and touch. It's a lot more than just content. Now, the other thing is a mashup. This is not a, a crossover because a mashup is just when you take two brands and you kind of stick them together. So yes, this My Little Pony wearing a Ghostbusters outfit is a perfect example. Sometimes companies try to play the mash off off as just the, well, the action figure is in cosplay. So these aren't supposed to be Ninja Turtles on the Enterprise, they're supposed to be Ninja Turtles dressed up, like for Halloween or Comic-Con. Now, one of the reasons that this video is being made and this comes up with so many questions is because Hasbro and Mattel have been teaming up to make a whole bunch of product recently. One of them being the Monopoly for the Barbie. Now, if you flip this over on the other side, you will see, yeah, there is a Hasbro and a Mattel mark on this box. It's, it's co-produced by both companies. Well, Hasbro is basically making it, but Mattel is allowing Hasbro to license their art and logos, etc., for Barbie. All right. And that happens all the time. But this is a little different, and people are questioning how in the world Mattel is even able to make Ninja Turtle figures, because this is not co-produced by Playmates. You can't, there's no Playmates logo on this. It's, it's purely 100% a Mattel toy. And that's one of the questions that's been popping up, is, well, how can Mattel do this by themselves? Well, if you look at retail, there's a lot of Ninja Turtle product out there. Like, a lot. I would say too much, except for the fact that it keeps selling. So obviously that's good. If there's a big enough audience, hey, make as much as you can. And now there is a He-Man Plano at retail, and there is a Turtle Plano at retail. And the idea that this is a skew that could kind of live between them. It's like a, a, a Plano bridge skew, call it. So it's got its kind of place at retail, if you know enough retailers are willing to give it a test out. But... It still doesn't the answer of how Mattel is able to do this, especially when Playmates has Ninja Turtles right next to it in the same scale and size. Doesn't, you know, that compete with it? Well, yes, it is a share of the Ninja Turtle dollar, but obviously the Ninja Turtle pie is pretty big because a lot of people can handle it right now. And that's what the license has been done. It's been split up. It's called splicing. Sometimes this is done by territory, like toys that are exclusive to Japan, for example, like uh, the SIG art stuff, even though you can still get it online. In fact, speaking of that, online and retail is another way that licenses get split up, where a product can be restricted to online only. Material, another way licenses are split up. In fact, this is something that I really enjoyed doing when I was at Entertainment Earth. We developed a whole line made out of wood called Pinmates, and this is what differentiated us and allowed us to make quote-unquote action figures out of Marvel and DC, but because they were made of wood, not plastic, that was our differentiator. So the license, again, was split up by material in this case. Okay, so yes, splicing up licenses has been a trend that's been happening for the last 20 years, for good or evil. It's made a lot more toy product out there. So turtles get split up in a lot of interesting ways. One is that a lot of the lines are split based on the original content or what it's drawing inspiration from. So, for example, the NECA figures at retail are based on the original cartoon series and are restricted to all channel. Versus something like Super 7 are based on the original toys and are restricted to online. Alright, so you can kind of see how two similar turtle lines could exist at the same time. Now, specialty in mass market is kind of blending. That's one of the issues, too. 
Specialty used to be comic book stores and, you know, Tower Records, that kind of thing, gift shops. Well, now, Mass doesn't just have their retail aisle, like, you know, their doll aisle, their wheels aisle, their blaster aisle. Well, they now have a specialty aisle. Usually, it's in the back of the store. Walmart and Target have been doing this for years with kind of the collector section. But it has been shrinking, and Target has actually brought their alt-channel aisle into their toy section for half an aisle. So it's kind of a sneaky way of getting product that's really not supposed to be at mass at mass. It's supposed to be for comic book stores. But Target found a way to get it actually into their toy aisle by having half of one aisle be an alt retail aisle. Clever, I suppose, which is why this is sometimes seen at Target in an actual toy aisle. It's supposed to be just for alt retailers, but now Target has become an alt retailer. See how that works? It's kind of crazy. But that's why there's so much Ninja Turtle out there. But it's all based on something different. So while Playmates will continue to make toys, and they'll even make toys that are crossovers. They've still got Donnie as Spock. You know, that's him dressing up as Spock, not him, you know, flying around in the Enterprise. But Mattel has gotten the license for Turtles based on doing them as an amalgam of Turtles and Motu. So that is their carve-out, if you will. So they can't make just a Raphael but they can make a Raphael if he's combined with Ram Man. So that is the specific Mattel license. Now, why the turtles are coming out kind of trickling through waves and they're not always uniform, you know, like Don doesn't have a D on his chest, is just a design standpoint and the way of spreading out the A-list characters throughout the year and not having all of the A-listers just come out in wave one or two. That's why they're being spread out like this. As far as the lack of uniformity between the turtles, I think that's just because of the mashup. That's what happens when you mash things up, is each character kind of gets treated as the amalgam of two characters, not necessarily a team player. So definitely encourage you guys to buy these online, too, because I don't know how much of the stuff's going to show up at retail because they are clogged with older 2022 Motu stuff. But hey, it's a different peg. Maybe it'll work. I hope this answers questions that viewers have had about the Ninja Turtle line. Thank you to John for suggesting this video. And uh, thank you very much for sharing it. It's the best way to support this channel. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.